This video is brought to you by YT Andrew Paul Tech Repairs. If you have a console, laptop, computer or Macbook in need of repair in the UK or the EU then have a look in the description below this video for details on how to contact us in order to organise your repair. Right, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this PS4 Slim, it's an SAD003 board and it has no power so it's a bit of a strange one this one because what it actually does is you plug it in and you can press a couple of the buttons it doesn't seem to do anything and then after a couple of seconds it'll beep but then it does nothing else there's no lights and no anything else and then we only get the one beep out of it and then it just dies and that's it so it's got a really weird power issue but when i opened it up the bottom plate is covered in what looks like crystallized pop essentially soda you know that fizzy drink basically um you know it's amazing i don't know how people why people drink fizzy drinks around games consoles or leave cans by games consoles i don't know because it's just asking for trouble but people do so this is an sad 0319817692921 revision motherboard and you can see along the edge it looks disgusting and all along the ground planes and everything else just look hideous and it's like that around most of the edge to be perfectly honest with you um it doesn't look great but what i will say is the majority of it seems to have stemmed around the edge you know the actual innards themselves look okay <laughs> don't look too bad and the top side as well uh, seems fairly clean, apart from on the uh, sort of right-hand edge where you can see up around the Wi-Fi antennas and things like that. Uh, it just looks hideous, doesn't it? I know, but um, yes. So we're going to see if we can. <coughs> pardon me. We're going to see if we can resurrect this board somewhat. Now then, what I will do is I will put this through the ultrasonic just to clean it off, and I think. You know that we'll see a big difference in in the appearance of this board anyway um but there's a little resistor here and i'm just gonna go around that just to see if there is anything at all there <laughs> i mean the thing is right i mean if you are going to sort of do some of this work then it is often easier to do it whilst the board i know the temptation is there to clean it straight away um, but to be fair, the crystallised fizzy drink essentially is like a bit of a roadmap as to where the damage is, and it's quite nice to be able just to sort of like take a look and and reference and see just what's going on. Um, obviously, if you go and clean it off, that that will disappear. Yes, your board will look nice, and it may work. You know what I mean? It, it may very well be that you'll get some joy, but if you don't then you kind of lose the um, competitive advantage, shall we say. Um, that may be trying to get this working. So we're just cleaning a little bit of the junk off here just to try and, uh, you know. So this is just IPA. This is just isopropyl alcohol. Um, this is the, the end of a tweezer blade here. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly sure this stuff isn't really gonna hurt anything to be fair but it ain't gonna help that is for for sure so I'm just gonna clean off around you know some of these bits and pieces here because of course this stuff when it crystallizes is essentially sugar and it will rot the board out if it's left on there for any length of time uh, but it can be slightly conductive as well um, which, again, when you're dealing with electronics, isn't uh, going to be particularly useful for you. But yes, I mean the biggest part of the biggest part of this, to be honest, is uh, I mean you can see here there's there's a little bit of a run down underneath this uh, secondary ram here, which sits above the south bridge. There's a little bit of something going on here in the corner of the south bridge. This is why I'm saying, you know, I, I am going to want to clean this this board out in the ultrasonic to try and get rid of some of this corrosion, um, some of this dirt and 
stuff underneath here because of course if that's left in place then the balls underneath are going to be uh, heavily oxidised, tarnished up. That will affect their ability to to conduct and like I say, putting through the ultrasonic may just get us out of trouble. But first of all, like I say, I'm going to have a quick run through by hand see what I can get rid of here first and then we'll take a look and see what if anything is looking a bit manky so like I say it's all around the edges to be honest the uh, the ground shield has done a, a fairly impressive job actually at keeping the biggest part of the uh, the water based sort of stuff or the liquid should I say um, out of the way of the, of the main components on the motherboard so that's cool um, pretty impressive you can see can't you there like little dots that's all sugar <laughs> that's all solid there are all the solids in here it's just it is nasty it is a horrible horrible thing especially if it's left because it's just I mean look at the colour of that q-tip now oh dear me it is horrible but I mean the contact points and everything around the edge of the of the IC actually look okay so again you know it might be on the top but but I'm not too worried about it to be fair so yes so anyway the one thing that I did notice actually apart from the fact that like I said the biggest part of the surrounding uh, components are good it's just the edges of the board that have become a little damaged but you can see down here look this is just this is a capacitor allegedly and you can see that's toasted. That's absolutely toasted. And the one behind it really doesn't look any better. Now, then this may very well be a big part of the issue. Now, I believe this is voltage regulation. This is power supply for the uh, MN864729 encoder. Um, I will be very surprised, actually, if that's working. But these, these power rails, of course, are all fed from the main rails. And if these are shorter to ground in any way... Well, let's face it, that cap isn't looking great, then it will pull the entire rail down, which may re result in our lack of power. Now, the thermistor on the circuit, TH2001, is in intact and does read continuity, so that's fine. Uh, but this looks toast. Now, then, there's no contact points at all here for me to, to measure, but what I will say is, going across the same two points here is this tiny little capacitor as well so we should be able to check to see if this cap is short and across by measuring this so the meters in continuity mode and you can see we have around seven ohms 6.7 6.6 ohms continuity and that's not great now then I don't have another slim board at the moment for donors but it is very very similar to a 1200 series machine so I'm hoping that we'll be able to find something that will kind of do the job from 1200. That would be rather cool. So anyway, what we're going to do now then is we're just going to see if we can get rid of those two sort of caps here. So this one here and this one here. I don't think they're going to take an awful lot of persuasion to come off. I <laughs> really do, really do. They're more or less ready to fall off by the looks of it. But, we shall see. So, usually stuff like this absolutely stinks when you go anywhere near it with the hot air. Just be thankful that it's pop. <laughs> Not urine from your, uh, from your favourite uh, pet. Because I've had that before now as well. An Xbox where somebody's, I presume it was a cat because it stunk. Somebody's cat decided to uh, go on somebody's machine. Oh, don't know, I smell sweet. That is hideous. Right, well, we've got rid of those two 
really dodgy looking capacitors so let's just see if we've managed to get rid of our short there so I'm just going to go in here with a tweezer blade because this is quite stubborn and in fact it's already kind of eating away the board this is really really difficult to get off and this is why it shouldn't really be left you know if, if something like this happens to you and you're not capable of fixing it you don't have the tools or the equipment or the materials to do it then don't sort of wait on it for any length of time you know try and get this to somebody who or somewhere who can try and get this sorted as quickly as it's physically possible because it could be the difference between ultimately your machine working again and never working again so it's not it's not a trivial thing really like I say this guy hopefully is going to have gotten a little bit lucky hopefully <laughs> there's a real chance he hasn't so anyway let's see then if that cap now being absent from the board has removed our short and Not hearing any beeping. Oh well. Nothing across there. So you can see this area here is common to this pad and this pad, and this area here is common to this pad and this pad. So this little capacitor, essentially, if these two areas were shorter before, then this cap will read a short. If that short has disappeared, then this cap now shouldn't read short. And indeed. It no longer does, which is fantastic. So, we seem to have got rid of, well, we've got rid of that short at least. We're not saying that we're out of the woods on this machine by any stretch of the imagination. Because, like I said, there is some signs of a little bit of something going on underneath the, uh, the Southbridge and the secondary ram. But it's certainly uh, something that won't have been helping at all now the question is like I said I have no spares for slim motherboards at the moment at all however hey, check this out on a 1200 SAC series board if you take a look by the system speaker does that layout look awfully familiar so the system speakers here, cap, little voltage regulator, the same two capacitors, same little one. Yeah, we can take those, I'm fairly sure. Basically the SAD series boards are just the SAC series board in the front. So, <laughs> so uh, yes, if you have an old SAC series board kicking around for parts, then the chances are you're going to find a lot of that will come across to the SAD, which is cool. That saves us having to have a boatload of spares we don't necessarily need. So I'm just going to flux these pads up. And we're going to go and we're going to lift some capacitors from this board. Okay, so I have the two components in question They're removed from the donor. So I'm just going to go pop these down again now.
Oh, bum. <laughs> I don't like using the straight tweezers for this. I prefer using my kinky ones. Okay, those are roughly in place, so you get a little bit of flux now. Just over the top. Just gonna flow these into position. So my apologies if I block your view for a sec. Okay, so that is that. Oops. Yep. So like I say, this board will go through the ultrasonic anyway, so you don't have to spend too much time getting it pristine so you can eat your dinner off it, at least for the time being. But uh, yeah, that seems to be just the ticket there. So we'll just measure our little cap again here. Well, open line, same big cap. Yeah, that's cool. We have have continuity across the bottom cap. Not sure if that is supposed to be the case. Yes, a C series board doesn't seem to read continuity across there. So, that would suggest to me that maybe the little voltage regulator itself here has a problem. So, if that is the case, so again, my apologies if I block you slightly. We're going for that little voltage regulator there now. Okay, so let's see then if that bottom cap is still reading short. So 
Indeed, one and a half ohms and dropping. <clears throat> so let's see if there's anything else here that might explain that. So we have this plane in here, which the back side of this links to, and then I presume that that pin there, because that pin there is on the same plane as this top pin here, which then comes out into here. So I'm thinking that that is ground. Oh, no, it isn't ground. However, this third pin in here, which comes across this cap, is shorted to ground. Is it? So that's ground. Open line. Ground, so yeah, that comes this side, so that's okie dokie. It's hmm. a little bit strange, is that one? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so sorry for the uh, the break there. Um, but essentially, um, so where were we now? I can't remember. Uh, we had, we've got a short across this cap, haven't we, here at the bottom? So we've removed that little voltage regulator, and the short itself is still present. 1.3 ohms across the cap. Now, um, it would appear that if we put one probe on ground, and one probe here, that's ground, okay, that leads into this pin here. And here, but that's fine. So if I check that on this SAC board, on the same uh, pins, then I get the same reading to ground. So that's absolutely fine. If we go across the cap, we'll see we just got OL open line, which is absolutely fine. No issue there. So that's okay. If we keep that same pin on ground and go to the bottom pin here. We get OL, top pin, we get OL. So it's not shorted to ground, but it is shorted across. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift that cap again just to see what's going on underneath there. Is it the cap that's shorted? Because then we'll measure the pads in a sec. Once we have the capacitor off again here. Okay. So we have the capacitor off and I've tried to do the same again. So I tried the other week. I knocked all my HDMI ports off. Luckily it didn't go that time. Otherwise that'd be me on my hands and knees for the next twenty minutes. Anyway. So let's go across these two pads then. Are we shorted across the pads? No. Oh well, open line. So if we go back to the capacitor, which is down here, if we measure across the cap, is the cap shorted? Is. Now, I don't know if that is shorted or if it's an inductor of some sort, maybe. If it's an inductor, that might explain it. If I've got another SAC board, and I should have one somewhere, if I do, and I do, and I can measure the same component from another board. Oops. Yep, I think it's an inductor. It's not a resistor or anything like that. Or a, or a cap. That's an inductor. So that's fine. That's okay then. That's, that's uh... <laughs> Always best to check. I mean, to be honest, I should have measured the components on the other board to begin with. I mean, to be fair, the, the appearance of it should have given it away. I weren't really thinking. Oops. It's been a long day. 
Well, we'll just drop this back on. Oops, I'll just make sure everything's where it should be. Okay, and we'll put our little voltage regulator back on as well, because ultimately there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I should have measured that. I should have measured all this to begin with against the donor Okay, so that's everything back on there now. Okay. Absolutely fine there now. Excellent. So we'll just give this a clean. Again, with some IPA. Like I said, not too bothered about it being pristine at this point. I'm really not all that bothered about that. As long as it's clean enough for us to see that everything's in good order. That's it, we're done. So, let's go plug this in, give it a test, and see if we get power. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is our PS4 Slim. It's reassembled, kind of, um, loosely put back together, so we can at least test it and see what we get. So, of course, before, like I said, we weren't really getting any power at all. What we were getting occasionally was we could press the power button just after applying power, or the eject button, and you'd find that only one of them would actually respond. Um, it would vary as to which one would respond at the time and uh, all you would get was the quick beep to acknowledge the fact the button had been pressed and then nothing the, the machine would just appear dead from that point um, what you would have to do then to get the machine to come back on was actually unplug power from the mains outlet and then reapply it occasionally you'd get it whereby the machine would beep but the power would die before the beep finished. So you'd kind of get it where you go, beep, and then it sort of like fade out, which was a little bit weird. Um, but as you can see, um, when we opened it up, there was this crystallized stuff in there. That's all going to have to be cleaned out, of course. But um, yes, so for now, all we want to know is if we've got power back, because I can't see anything else on the board that, that would suggest that this thing is horrible. So let's just go and see if... We have power. Well, the fan's spinning. I can hear the DVD drive. It weren't doing that before. We've still got power applied to the blue light. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Checking system storage status. So it's going to run through uh, safe mode and disk checks. So I am just going to try and raise you up a little bit here. So. Get a little bit of a better angle. I'm out of practice with this tripod. <laughs> it's been a while, to be honest. Uh, okay. Okay, so it's doing a big old disc check. So it's obviously been turned off during a disc check at some point, because then rather than doing a quick check, it'll actually do the full disc check, which is a lot slower. So I'll just wait for that to complete. But as you can see there, we have... I mean, that, that was a worrying thing, of course, because, like I said, that circuit does supply power to the um, HDMI encoder. So, of course, it was possible that the encoder itself was damaged at this point. But as it would appear, certainly at 480p, it's OK. So, this will reboot now. So, it's certain white light at the moment. The fan has stopped. The relay's clicked in the... Power supply has gone back to blue. Fan, disk drive and everything has started back up. There we go, PlayStation logo. So if this boots back into OS, 
We're going to have to plug a controller in and see if it works. That's the next task, if you like. And uh, I'm not entirely sure if I can reach my controller from here with a tripod in the way. So I'm just going to have to uh, maybe move you slightly here for a second, just to see if I can uh, sneak past. We have audio, that's cool. Okay, so controller. I'm just going to try and plug this in, hopefully. Yeah, we have an orange light on the controller. I'm sure if you can see that there. Okay, yep, we sync. Excellent, there we go. That's it. If we unplug the controller now, so I've got the lead in my hand there. As you can see, we still synced. We're in. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, oh, it's been installed in extended storage, so I'm fairly sure there's a disc in here. I can hear it. It looks like it's that one. Just make sure it's still reading disc properly. Would appear so. Excellent. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I've never seen this game before. <laughs> a gorilla in a space suit. Well, but yes, as I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, it would appear, therefore, that that little capacitor and that little inductor behind it were indeed the causes of our problem. And it just goes to show that even one tiny little component, or in our case, two tiny little components, on a seemingly kind of minor circuit can be enough because if those components are shorted to ground like that capacitor was what we can actually find is that whatever power rail feeds that smaller rail think of it as a big tree branch you've got the big trunk in the middle the bigger branches coming off and then loads of tiny little branches with the leaves on if you have one of those tiny little branches with a leaf on that's short into ground it will pull everything on that rail and everything that that rail feeds into to ground as well. So you can end up with something as inconspicuous as a horrible capacitor and you can actually end up whereby it will completely bring the system down to the point where the damn thing doesn't work at all. Or it appears to be a really strange issue. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. So I'm just going to come out of there now. I'm going to go back to the home screen. And I'm going to shut this down because it is time... To end the video and as always i'm going to say thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen i've immensely enjoyed your company this afternoon if you have any comments or any questions then feel free to pop them in the comments below and i do kind of uh come on here a couple of times a day much to the annoyance of my missus to uh sort of see what's going on and, uh, and answer any questions or anything you may have if you're in the uk and you are in need of a repair of your own then by all means feel free to hit me up you can find my email address in the description of the video it's whiteyandrewpaul at outlook.com send me an email to there with your issue and your location and you know i'll see if i can get a quote to you for your own repair likewise if you're in the need of components for ps4 xbox one macbooks anything like that then by all means again drop me a message and we ship those worldwide so components will go wherever you are um, likewise just send me uh, an email what you need quantities location and again i'll get a prize to you for getting those off um like i said if at all you need me for anything if you want to ask me a question in private then hit me up on twitter my dm inbox is open to everybody uh twitter handle is at whitey andrew paul you shouldn't need to follow me or anything like that it's just anybody can fire a message into there and uh, and i'll try and get back to you there uh if you'd rather but like i said for for the biggest part if you've just got a quick question then pop it in the comments below and i'll try and answer you as quickly as i can so as always thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen hopefully it won't be too long till the next one i've got a couple of videos that i'm working on at the moment um to edit up and get online so hopefully it won't be too long till the next one um so thank you very much for watching as always i've been andy paul you've been fantastic and i will see you in the not too distant future on the next video so for me for now 
It's bye-bye, and I hope life treats you well. Many thanks for watching then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.